Good morning and welcome to Midday Connection on this Thursday, April 14th, day before tax day, but also Monday Thursday, which means Commandment Thursday, the day in which we celebrate the Lord's Supper where Jesus and his disciples uh, come together for that last meal together where Jesus issues a new commandment to love one another as he has loved us. So that's why Monde, uh, from mandatus meaning commandment in Latin, so that's why we have a Monday Thursday, not Monday Thursday as some people say. But anyway, many of our readings today, oh, oh by the way, um, I'm Pastor Joel from First Presbyterian Church here in San Angelo. And I'm Natalie. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to read of the daily lectionary texts for today and to pray and discuss them a little bit. And so uh, let me go ahead and open this in a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to read your word and to be informed by your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that as we reflect upon uh, this holy week, as we are approaching Easter, uh, that we would be uh, especially mindful of what you are doing uh, in our own lives, uh, in the world, what you have accomplished through your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray that as we read today and hear today and uh, discuss today, that we would be transformed today into the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and we pray all of these things in your name, Jesus. All right, so um, did we finish the discussion on that? Monday, Thursday, meaning commandment Thursday. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, again, many of our texts are discussing that issue. And so let's see how they play out today. Starting this morning with Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, you who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father or mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew text is from Lamentations chapter 2, verses 10 through 18. The elders of daughter Zion sit on the ground in silence. They have thrown dust on their heads and put on sackcloth. The young girls of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. 
My eyes are spent with weeping, my stomach churns, my bile is poured out on the ground because of the destruction of my people, because infants and babes faint in the streets of the city. They cry to their mothers, where is bread and wine, as they faint like the wounded in the streets of the city, as their life is poured out on their mother's bosom. What can I say for you? To what compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? To what can I liken you, that I may comfort you, O virgin daughter Zion? For vast as the sea is your ruin, who can heal you? Your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. They have not exposed your iniquity to restore your fortunes, but have seen oracles for you that are false and misleading. All who pass along the way cluck their hands at you, they hiss and wag their heads at daughter Jerusalem. Is this the city that was called the perfection of beauty, the joy of all the earth? All your enemies open their mouths against you. They hiss, they gnash their teeth, they cry, we have devoured her. Ah, this is the day we long for, at last we have seen it. The Lord has done what he purposed. He has carried out his threat as he ordained long ago. He has demolished without pity. He has made the enemy rejoice over you and exalted the might of your foes. Cry aloud to the Lord, O wall of daughter Zion. Let tears stream down like a torrent day and night. Give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. And from the New Testament, we read 1 Corinthians um, chapter 10, verses 14 through 17, and then we'll jump to chapter 11, verses 27 through 32. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from the worship of idols. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a shearing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a shearing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves as only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Our gospel text today is from Mark chapter 14, verses 12 through 25. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go? and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover. So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, it is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, 
I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. And our final psalm today is Psalm 102. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily in the day when I call. For my days pass away like smoke, and my bones burn like a furnace. My heart is stricken and withered like grass. I am too wasted to eat my bread. Because of my loud groaning, my bones cling to my skin. I am like an owl of the wilderness, like a little owl of the waste places. I lie awake. I am like a lonely bird on the housetop. All day long my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name for a curse. For I eat ashes like bread and mingle tears with my drink. Because of your indignation and anger, for you have lifted me up and thrown me aside. My days are like an evening shadow. I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. Your name endures to all generations. You will rise up and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to favor it. The appointed time has come. For your servants hold its stones dear and have pity on its dust. The nations will fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord will build up Zion. He will appear in his glory. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Let this be recorded for a generation to come, so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord, that he looked down from his holy height. From heaven the Lord looked at the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who were doomed to die, so that the name of the Lord may be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem when peoples gather together in kingdoms to worship the Lord. He has broken my course. He has broken my strength in mid-course. He has shortened my days. O oh my God, I say, do not take me away at the midpoint of my life, you whose years endure throughout all generations. Long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you endure. They will all wear out like a garment. You change them like clothing, and they pass away. But you are the same, and your years have no end. The children of your servants shall live secure. Their offspring shall be established in your presence. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, when we were, uh, before we started reading, we were talking about how today is Monday, Thursday, and how these texts today do uh, remind us of the Lord's Supper and how he established that uh, he changed the practice of the Passover feast to, uh, to its fulfillment, uh, where he, Jesus, is to become the, the full and the righteous sacrifice that will ultimately forgive so that new sacrifices don't need to be repeated over and over uh, as in the animal sacrifices of the Passover feast, but Jesus being the perfect Lamb of God, the, the Son of God, the sinless one, fully human, was able then to, through his sacrifice, forgive us of our sins in their entirety. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm intrigued by with the Mark passage is uh, the reminder that when Jesus is initiating this, uh, this sacrament, how uh, he knows that there is one there who will betray him. He knows that Judas is there. He knows that the very person who is uh, dipping bread into the cup right there in the presence of Jesus is ultimately going to betray him. And there's uh, one of those uh, woes that comes out 
you know, Jesus knows that what he's doing, he is, um, it was planned from the beginning. The Son of Man is going to do these things, but woe to the one uh, who, uh, by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. And I think that uh, maybe in our culture today, we don't, we don't use that word woe very often, do we? No. <laughs> it's like no, just, no. woe to you. We, we don't do that. That's like a biblical right. term. And in a way, I think it's like, that's why it's a biblical term. I think that there are things that are going on um, in, in the heavens and on earth that, uh, that God is aware of. And that whole woe, um, as in, uh, you know, great lament that destruction is coming, that there is some severe justice that's going to be imposed. And going back to what we read in Lamentations, where, uh, again, Jeremiah is lamenting the destruction of Israel and how we read about the, the false prophets that were giving them, oh, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be good. Uh, Jerusalem is, is blessed by God, and therefore no evil will befall it. All of these um, false prophets prophecies that come. And I wonder sometimes, are we not living in days that have similar uh, false promises? Everybody is out there trying to promise. If you, you know, if you take this supplement, if you take this product, if you vote for me, if whatever it might happen to be, um, if you watch this certain program, you know, you'll be happy, you'll be wealthy, you'll be wise, there will be no destruction that comes upon you. Everything's going to be great as long as you uh, follow this prescription. And, and I think that's where, um, you know, following after Jesus is very different than false prophecies because Jesus throughout the Gospels has regularly told his disciples that he was going to suffer and he was going to die. And even his disciples at the time were like, no, that's not, you know, that's, that's not, you know, you're the Messiah. You can, you can do anything you want. It's all going to be great. And we want to be with you celebrating all that good, great stuff. How easy it is for us as humans to listen to false prophecies. Right. And... And really, even how the enemies of Jerusalem, you know, that whole that image of they hiss and they gnash their teeth and they're just like, look, you, you who were so proud have gotten your comeuppance in a way. And even, uh, even Jeremiah uh, was talking in that verse 18, you know, cry aloud to the Lord, let tears stream down like a torrent day and night, give yourself no rest, your eyes no respite. Um, you know, how often do we really truly mourn the sins in our life in such a way as that? You know, again, I think, um, you know, David and I talked a little bit yesterday about how seriously God takes sin and and the ser such the serious nature that sin, the wages of sin is death, as it says in scripture. Um, and, and obviously God took it so seriously that that Jesus then dies for our sins. Should we not take it seriously and actually live lives that are obedient to what Christ has called us to do? Right. Well, and I think as you're talking through, um, even the limitations, they're, they're trying to elevate, you know, it's trying to show this is better than that. And and, and people, if you, if you drive this car, you buy this product, take this pill, whatnot, when it all boils down to that, everyone is so... We have this human nature that we want to elevate ourselves above others. And you look at that Mark passage, and that's exactly what the disciples were trying to do. Right. And, um, but the bottom line is, is the Lord's Supper is offered to all. Mm -hmm. And Jesus died for all. And he doesn't look at one person and elevate them above other. And someone is not bestowed some blessing that's going to, and it's, it's like it's the great equalizer. Mm -hmm. And when we come to the table, it is, as a Corinthian, you know, we all eat of one bread. Right. We all drink of one cup. Mm -hmm. And with that, that is that great equalization. Right. And um, the gift is offered fully to all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's what we forget. And, and we think somehow the ways of the world or the promises of the world are going to elevate us. And we come to the table in humility in a reminder that in God's eyes, those things, they don't mean anything. So. Yeah, thanks, Noah. I think it's a great insight. Um, 
uh, there were, because we skipped from chapter 10 over to the end of chapter 11, I do encourage all of us to go back and look at those intervening passages where um, you know, Paul is talking so much about how the community of faith needs to be a, a welcoming, uh, a, an encouraging, a, a challenging community where the differences that uh, exist between humans uh, as you were saying, uh, when we come before Jesus, uh, that we are all finding ourselves in the same condition. We are all sinners in need of forgiveness. We are all um, beloved children of God that God is giving blessings to. And so it's that recognition of, of the different gifts that people have, um, and even the ways that God has gifted people differently it is not for one person's benefit over other people, that it is to be used within the community of faith together. Um, and so the, that, that chapter 11, that the beginning parts of chapter 11 uh, is, is really making, Paul is really making the distinction between um, you know, rich people that have so much that a, a common meal really means nothing to them because they've eaten everything already. And, and poor people, a common meal, if all they're getting is the crumbs, uh, that just makes the, uh, that emphasizes the difference between people as opposed to what, what Jesus is saying, that when you all come before me, my love is available for everybody. That, that, uh, that eating um, the Lord's Supper in, a, in an unworthy manner um, is not bringing blessings upon yourself, but it's actually reminding us and even imposing some of the curse that still exists from our disobedience. So, so you know, we're going into um, you know tonight. Today is Monday, Thursday, and tonight many of us in our community are going to be celebrating um, a, a community meal. It's, it's one of the, my favorite times of the year when we can have a potluck meal together and, and share fellowship with one another. Um, and I know that some people will be providing um, a greater amount of something and other people are gonna be providing what they have the capacity to provide. And one of the great things about a community in that regard is everybody eats from it and everybody enjoys it together. Uh, those that God has um, at this point, blessed with great material blessings, have an opportunity to provide, but not in a way to say, look how amazing I am, but to give credit and glory to God for providing for this way in the community. And those who have uh, proportionally less are still able to participate, bringing something that adds to the fellowship. But ultimately then, after the end of the meal, when we celebrate sacrament, when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, and we remember these verses from from 1 Corinthians about how this is a community meal. This is a, a uh, not only a, uh, a demonstration of God's presence here and now, but a promise of, of future where we will uh, all eat together uh, at, the, at the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven in, in the presence of, of God face to face. Um, it's an opportunity for us to experience that yeah. You have anything else you want to add to any of that? No, I think that's good. Oh, well, I don't know whether it's good or not, but uh, it kind of makes sense to me right now. And, and that's kind of the thing. Whenever we read God's Word, it's, there's always going to be a challenge to us. And reading these passages on different days sometimes strike me in different ways. Uh, but reading it on a day that we do get to celebrate um, Monday, Thursday, knowing that Good Friday is tomorrow, knowing that Easter is coming in a few days, um, reminds us of that emphasis and combining lamentations in there and combining these other psalms. Um, it's just challenging stuff. Yeah. I'm not a perfect person, um, but I'm glad that we worship a perfect God. Um, yeah. But thanks for, thanks for reading with me today. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, again, we are thankful for your word to us today. Lord, I'm thankful that we can read these psalms uh, that have words that sound so uh, despairing of our current condition, but psalms that end with uh, glory given to you and an acknowledgement of your eternal nature and your eternal love 
and how all of the things of this world are passing away, but you remain uh, in your perfection and you remain in your glory uh, and you remain in, uh, in the love that invites us to participate in that. So Lord, help us to not grasp on to these worldly things, but let us use the gifts that you've given us in, in a worldly context to glorify you and to build up the community of faith. Um, Lord, I'm grateful that you have given us good gifts. And for those of us who do live um, in, in, in abundance of material blessings, uh, remind us to be accountable to you and accountable to the community and find ways to share those gifts uh, with those who have fewer things and help us to receive from them uh, the blessings that you have for us through the gifts that you've given them because we know lord that you have gifted everybody with yourself and because you have gifted everybody in the community with yourself that we can receive from you uh, uh, the gifts of other people and so we're grateful for that so lord bless us as we um, go into our uh, the rest of the day preparing for our services tonight in the different homes I pray for those uh, home hosts who are uh, practicing good hospitality tonight. Uh, we pray that there would be good fellowship and good fun and, and the feasting um, that we uh, can get a taste of here and now in preparation for the ultimate feast that is to come. And Lord, for the ways that there still is division in our community, I pray that you would forgive us and, and give us the, uh, the wisdom to know how to love and serve others better. Give us the grace, Lord, to, uh, to be patient with those who, who are trying. Um, Lord, help us all uh, to remember how you even sat with one who was to betray you uh, and still invited him into, uh, into the hospitality that you can only give. Uh, Lord, forgive us again for the ways that we fall short and bless us with your presence tonight as we celebrate uh, the supper that you have prepared. Um, and we, we pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm grateful that you have enjo uh, joined us today. And just a reminder, our Good Friday service is here in the sanctuary at 515 on Friday. And then we will have two services, 630 at the Lake Lodge and 1030 in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. And we look forward to you guys joining us there. I hope you have a blessed day. Take care. Bye-bye.